Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for City of Greensboro news and information. All lanes of Yanceyville Street between Lindsay Street and Summit Avenue will be closed 24 hours, seven days a week for the next two weeks. This will allow crews to install storm drains and spruce up the medians with new landscaping. When that section of work is complete, lanes will reopen and the second stage of the project will begin. Phase two will involve closing all lanes on Yanceyville Street between Summit Avenue and Fifth Avenue to continue the installation. Construction work on this section is also expected to take place 24 hours, seven days a week for approximately two weeks. Detour signs are in place and motorists are advised to avoid the area if possible. Work schedules are dependent on weather conditions and equipment availability. For more information about lane and road closures and to subscribe to email notices about future street projects, visit the city's website. It's election season again in Greensboro. Make your way to a computer or mobile device. Residents ages 14 and older can help decide how to spend $500,000 of the city's budget by voting in participatory budgeting or PB Greensboro. Voting is open until Saturday, October 15th on the PB Greensboro website. Ballots are available in English and Spanish. PB Greensboro is a democratic process designed to allow residents to decide how to use public funds on projects or programs within their city council district. Since its inception in 2014, residents have voted to fund more than 70 projects around the city. This year, community volunteers helped turn 200 plus ideas submitted by residents into 32 proposed projects that will appear on the ballot. This year's proposed projects include street sign toppers to identify historic neighborhoods, bus shelters, water bottle filling stations, outdoor fitness equipment, teen programs, recreation center improvements, kayaks, and benches, just to name a few. For more information, contact Leela Lewis, PB's Community Outreach Coordinator, at 336-373-2406. As you drive around town, it looks like construction is happening at nearly every turn. Do you ask yourself what's being built on a street you drive by frequently? Perhaps you want to check on the permit status of the addition you're putting on your home. To answer these types of questions about building permits and development in Greensboro, the city has created a new online portal called Plan Review Status. This web portal allows you to track the status of plans that have been submitted into the city's permit review system for approval and subsequent construction. The portal can be accessed from a few different areas of the city's website, including the Development Services Office, the Planning Department, and the Engineering and Inspections Department. Simply search for information about the status of a project by typing in the address of the project, the name of the applicant who submitted the plan, or the plan ID number assigned when the plan was submitted. Plan review status is the residential version of the city's plan review and tracking, which is an electronic plan upload and review system used by commercial developers and contractors. Cone Health has partnered with the city to share a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Following these tips is an easy way to help each of us improve our quality of life. Let's take a moment to check out today's news for your health. Hi, I'm Kate Towery, a registered dietitian for Cone Health Nutrition and Diabetes Services. Do you pack your lunch each day? Maybe getting bored of the same old brown bag lunch? Maybe wondering, is this even healthy? Well, join me today for tips on packing a healthy, well-balanced meal that you and the kids are going to enjoy. Let's get started. When creating a well-balanced lunch, we want to include a few key components, and I like to use a very simple tool called my plate or the portion plate. First, we start with our grains or starches. This provides the body's favorite energy, um, which is going to keep your brain sharp throughout work and school. Whole grains have the most fiber, which is very heart healthy. Those would include options like your whole wheat crackers, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, um, and brown rice. Next, we always want to include a protein. This helps keep you full and satisfied throughout the day. Choose leaner or low-fat options like chicken, turkey, fish, 
and your vegetarian sources such as beans, nuts and seeds, eggs, and low-fat cheese. Lastly, we really want to try to fill up the rest of our plate with fruits and vegetables, aiming for color and variety because after all, we eat with our eyes first. And these foods have the most nutrition with the lowest amount of calories, so we can get big volume on our plate. They also contain very protective qualities like antioxidants that help keep us from getting sick, which is really important during back to school time. So I've prepared a couple of example meals that are gonna be fun and creative for you and the kids and definitely have that healthy balance. So the first one is a new take on the traditional deli sandwich. These are tortilla roll-ups. They're very simple to make. Um, I used whole wheat tortilla as our grain, lots of good fiber there. Spread it with some low-fat um, herb cream cheese and turkey slices for our protein. Also added a little bit of spinach. You could include some red peppers or pimentos for additional color. Um, fun little bite-sized sandwiches. We've then paired that with some carrots and grapes, so different textures here, get that color on the plate. And lastly, some unsalted pretzels, which I'm gonna pair with a natural peanut butter for additional protein and heart healthy fats. Next up is one of my favorite things to do is cooking ahead a little bit on the weekend, really goes a long way for a busy week. My preference, fix the protein. Today, I've created a salmon salad, similar to what you would make for a tuna salad, chicken salad. You could even do an egg salad, and this would be a great protein dish to use throughout the week in a variety of ways, like on a sandwich, or in a wrap, or with crackers. Today, I've chosen to top the salad on a bed of greens. So the salmon salad, very simple. I use canned salmon, a little bit of low-fat mayonnaise. You could also use plain Greek yogurt. I did put some sliced almonds in there for crunch as well as the relish, lemon juice to cut the fishy taste, and lots of ground pepper. I've chosen spinach, but any kind of lettuce would work, romaine, iceberg, um, spring leaf. And we're just gonna top the salmon salad onto our bed of greens. I've also packed some tomatoes and red onions for color, so we'll put those on top as well as balsamic vinaigrette for the dressing, light Italian or some oil and vinegar would be another healthy choice, and some crackers for our grains and a little bit of crunch. I've also packed um, the shelf-stable fruit cups. Fruit cups are a great way to um, get your fruit serving in. However, I recommend choosing the ones in water or 100% juice. Um, the syrups have a lot of added sugar, and fruits are naturally sweet, so we don't need to add any more sugar to them. Lastly, whenever I get a little bored with my lunch options, I try to think back to something I really was excited about as a kid, and for me, that was Lunchables. So today, I've created a healthier version of a Lunchable. Um, instead of pepperoni, we've got turkey kielbasa, a lot lower in fat, still watch the sodium there. A couple ounces of some cheese, you could also do a spreadable cheese or a low fat cheese if you're watching your heart health. And some whole grain crackers, whole wheat or these are actually quinoa and millet. I've paired that with broccoli and cauliflower for our vegetables and a delicious dipping sauce of hummus. This is going to give a good punch of protein to keep you full as well as fiber from those chickpeas. And our fruit, we've got some sliced green apples. If you are really into these dipping sauces like I was as a kid, the single serve ones are great, but if you want to go a little more financially and environmentally friendly, you can buy in bulk and just invest in some of these small containers. If you're thinking about taking your lunch more often, you may want to go ahead and invest in an insulated lunch bag as well as an ice pack. These are very simple. Just throw them in the freezer till frozen, put them in your lunch box the next day, and they're going to help keep your food cold that needs refrigeration for up to four to five, maybe even six hours. And that's going to help prevent the growth of bacteria and keep your food safe. Another option would be to take a juice box or yogurt or even grapes place these in the freezer till frozen cold, place them in your lunchbox the next day, and they're gonna keep your food cold as well, but they'll be thawed out and ready to enjoy by lunchtime. Also, don't forget the importance of hand hygiene. Wash your hands with warm soapy water every time before you handle or prepare fresh food to prevent the spread of germs. And I also recommend taking a clean, damp towel and wiping out the inside of your lunchbox after every use. 
Um, if you're using your lunchbox pretty frequently, go ahead and wash it out with warm soapy water and let it air dry about once a week. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you found some helpful tips to banish that brown bag boredom for you and your family. If you'd like more information, visit conehealth.com slash healthy eating. I'm Kate Towery. Enjoy your lunch. The Greensboro Police Department is coordinating a donation drive and the Peeler Recreation Center will serve as the canvas for a community mural. We'll have those stories and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The Greensboro Police Department invites the community to partner with the Watch Operations Division for a sleeping bag donation drive. The sleeping bags will be distributed this fall to those experiencing homelessness. Residents and community groups can donate to the Friends in Need Fall Sleeping Bag Drive until Friday, September 30th. Donations of new sleeping bags can be dropped off in the lobby at police headquarters located at 100 Police Plaza. Look for the donation boxes. Behavioral health response team officers and clinicians will distribute the sleeping bags to those in need as the weather gets colder. For health and safety reasons, used sleeping bags cannot be accepted. Also, monetary donations cannot be accepted by the police department. For more information, contact the Greensboro Police Watch Operations Division at 336-373-2496. Creative Greensboro and the Greensboro Parks and Recreation Department are calling all muralists. This is an opportunity to design and install a community-informed spray-painted mural on the exterior of the Peeler Recreation Center. The selected artist will receive a contract for $12,000 to cover all materials, artist fees, and costs to complete the mural. The deadline to apply is 5 p.m. on Saturday, October 1st. This mural project is part of the Peeler Community Park Plan approved by City Council in 2019 and the Outdoor Recreation Legacy Program Grant received for, for the outdoor improvement at Peeler Community Park. The mural will be installed on the seven-paneled wall facing Phillips Avenue. A community stakeholder committee will provide support to the project, including selection of the artist. The committee includes residents who live in neighborhoods close to the Peeler Recreation Center and members of the Greensboro Cultural Affairs Commission. Through a range of program services and partnerships, Creative Greensboro supports the development of a vibrant city. For more information and to apply for the mural project, visit the city's website. The Greensboro Parks and Recreation Department is partnering with the Greensboro Parks Foundation to host the 13th annual Downtown Greenway Run and Block Party. The event will take place from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday, October 8th in Lo-Fi Park. Registration is open for the one-mile fun run, walk and stroll, along with the four-mile timed race. Dogs are welcome. Proceeds support downtown Greenway operations and community programs. People of all ages may participate in either event. Participants will receive an event t-shirt, refreshments and drink tickets for soda, juice, water or beer. The entire community is invited to the block party featuring a DJ and food trucks. There will also be children's activities, sponsor tents with giveaways, local vendor booths, and prize drawings. Lo-Fi Park is located at 500 North Eugene Street. For more information about the Downtown Greenway, visit the agency's website. The pandemic created mass chaos from a public health and personal finance perspective. The City of Greensboro responded with emergency funding. Coming up after the break, we'll have an update on the Rental Assistance Program. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. COVID-19 took the nation and our community by storm. The shutdown period forced many people to stop working, which resulted in foreclosure and eviction notices. 
Joining me now to tell us how the City of Greensboro provided financial resources is Liz Alverson. She is the Homeless Prevention Program Coordinator for the City of Greensboro. Hello Liz, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in, it's always good to see you. Now your department, Housing and Neighborhood Development, was instrumental with resources through the ERA program. Tell us what does that stand for and how were the residents able to benefit from this? Absolutely, so the Emergency Rental Assistance Program Program, or ERAP for short, is a federally funded program um, that was implemented and designed to help residents with rent and utility assistance um, due to the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so any type of negative impact where a person lost their job, their hours were reduced, or they had some type of health crisis, um, they could seek these uh, um, funds in order to help pay for their rent and utilities if they had arrears and things like that. Okay, and I know that was really a lifesaver for so many people as the quarantine set in and businesses were shut down. It put people in a real tailspin. So this program launched in March of 2021. How many households have been served and how much funding did that involve? To date, we have served 3,052 households um, and that equates to just over $18 million. Um, when looking at the stats, roughly eight out of 10 households that applied for the funding were served through this program. Um, and we're still moving forward. So the city exhausted all of their funding and ended up partnering with Guilford County and their program so we could continue to provide this service in the community. Fantastic, and this was federal funding? Correct. Okay, yes. so um, funds are pretty much spent, I'm guessing, and um, if you have any money left now, how is that being prioritized and how long would someone have to wait? Um, so there, there is funding um, that's still available to the community. However, we're prioritizing um, households that are facing imminent eviction and or have utility disconnections. Um, and we're doing that through, a, a, a one way that we're doing that is through the eviction mediation clinic, which okay. is held on Tuesdays at the courthouse. Um, that's in partnership with Guilford County as well as legal aid. Um, and so we are taking direct referrals from that program to assist those families who are about to be evicted. Um, and then we still have quite a few, or really less, roughly less than 100 applications left in our queue. We're focusing on trying to provide assistance to those remaining households as well. Okay, so no one needs to feel like they are being left behind, and that's good to know. Now, once you exhaust those 100 applications that are left to wrap up the ERAP um, concept, do you see this being something that you stand up in a different way to offer similar services? Absolutely. Um, there has been uh, quite uh, a bit of discussion in the community amongst partner agencies, amongst leaders in our community about the need to continue a program similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we'll not have the same flexibilities. Um, the Treasury, U.S. Treasury Department who funded ERAP had um, it very flexible so we could uh, assist as many households as possible. Um, unfortunately, if we do have funding that's available or a different funding source, Source, the eligibility criteria is not going to be as flexible. Um, but we are looking to continue this. Um, we're looking to continue our partnership with the eviction clinic um, through Guilford County. And so we're, we're really trying to push um, efforts and solutions to homelessness prevention. Okay, and just for folks who aren't familiar with the eviction clinic, what does that mean and, and how does that work? Um, so the eviction clinic is a partnership between the city of Greensboro, Guilford County, and legal aid. Um, an individual, uh, typically, the clinic is held on Tuesdays. We just expanded that to city of High Point for one day. Mm -hmm. In October, we're gonna move to two days in Greensboro, two days in High Point, so we can serve more folks. Um, and anyone that has been given an eviction notice and are in arrears, we're gonna try to connect them to rental assistance through that partnership. Um, if there are residents out there that have received an eviction notice or a summary ejectment letter, um, they can actually go on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. to the Guilford County Courthouse and meet with the team with Legal Aid in Guilford County and City of Greensboro representatives. Okay, well, there are so many people struggling right now and with the rental market changing as it has in the last couple of months, I'm sure that has been a factor Absolutely. to all of these evictions. Well, Liz, we're always glad to see you. Thank you for taking Thank you the for time to give us this very important update on ERAP, um, rental assistance funds, and do come back and let us know about other resources that are available through housing and neighborhood development. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for some interesting and useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city.
That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact you and our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. The city council has resumed meeting in the Katie Dorsett Council Chamber on level two of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The public is allowed in person, but only in a limited capacity. Those who choose not to be in the building can participate virtually. The Greensboro City Council meetings are broadcast right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Creative Greensboro, the city's office for arts and culture, will award $400,000 through its new Sustaining Creativity Community Partnership Grants. The money supports general operations, administration, and programs for nonprofit organizations with a primary focus on creative programming. This opportunity is designed to extend resources to groups not currently receiving significant support from the city of Greensboro. The deadline to apply is Saturday, October 22nd. A panel led by Greensboro Cultural Affairs Commissioners will evaluate applications. Grants of $20,000 will be awarded to organizations recommended for support. A limited number of organizations may be recommended for an additional five dollars or $10,000 for their efforts toward creative vibrancy and community benefit as defined in the program guidelines and evaluated by the review panel. For the application and additional grant requirements, visit the city's website. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, let's see how the city of Greensboro celebrates diversity in the workplace. Equity and inclusion are vital for the city of Greensboro's ability to grow and innovate in such a fast-changing environment. One Greensboro is a monthly show that highlights some of the ways the Office of Equity and Inclusion honors the observances listed on our heritage calendar and spotlights a City of Greensboro employee in a segment we call The One. These observances are an integral part of the National Equal Employment Opportunity and Civil Rights Program and encourage us to live as one people, one community, one Greensboro. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents, and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. The Greensboro Fire Department invites you to participate in Fire Prevention Week Monday, October 8th through Friday, October 14th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Participants will receive a discount at the Greensboro Science Center for participation in fire safety education. The national theme is Fire Won't Wait, Plan Your Escape. The event will take place at the Greensboro Science Center located at 4301 Lawndale Drive. There will be an appearance by Sparky the Fire Dog and prize giveaways. A Fire Prevention Week kickoff event will take place on Saturday, October 8th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Home Depot located at 4425 West Wendover Avenue. This event will include food trucks, fire trucks, police cars, and games. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to Downtown Greenway. The North Carolina chapter of the American Planning Association presented the Downtown Greenway with its Great Place for Public Art Award. The honor goes to cities that showcase their community's creative side, 
From its earliest stages, downtown Greenway planners determined site-specific public art would be a key focus of the trail. Four major works of public art mark the corners of the four-mile loop. Each of these pieces has a theme related to Greensboro and its growth into the city it is today. The cornerstone themes of motion, innovation, tradition, and freedom were developed through extensive community collaboration. In addition, there are benches and bike racks created by artists, as well as special features throughout the loop. Way to go, Downtown Greenway. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our 5-Minute Flash Briefings, which airs on 90.1 FM and 100.7 FM. Be sure to download both weekly podcasts, Talk City Greensboro and Connect GSO, plus GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.